Hey, I'm RC and welcome to the episode 13 about creating a game in HTML5. So if you haven't watched the last episode, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So, so far we can move our player with the arrow keys, we can left click to shoot a bullet and we can right click to shoot three bullets. That's pretty much it. Okay, so what I have in mind for this video is to refactor our code. So for those who don't know, um, refactoring means to um, change a code, so optimize the code and make it a lot cleaner without actually changing the functionalities. So for the player, it makes absolutely no difference, but for the programmer, um, it's a big deal. And it's very important to refactor and reread um, all your code very often to make sure that everything makes sense. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is to um, change the way bullets are being created. So the way we handle attacks. Right now what we do is um, when the player clicks the left click, it generates an attack. So this is great, but what if we want a, an enemy to spawn an attack? We cannot do it with our system. We would need to do it entirely different function and copy paste that code but for the enemy. So what we are going to do is we will um, create a new function called perform attack that will take as a parameter an actor. It can be any actor. And what it will do is it will shoot bullets like this. So it will take actor um, attack counter, reset it, and then generate the bullet for that actor. And when you, the player on click, it will perform attack for player. So this is exactly the same than before, except that now we will eventually be able to call perform attack enemy. Now one problem uh, right now is that in order to be able to do an attack, as you can see, we need to have the attack counter and in the generate bullet right here, we need to have the aim, um, the aim angle. So in order to shoot a bullet, we need to, if we want the enemies to be able to shoot a bullet, we need to add those two parameters to the enemy um, constructor. So right here in our enemy, we are going to add, um, aiming goal which will be zero by default and then we will need to add attack speed um, and then we will need to add you also need attack speed and the last one is attack counter to zero so now potentially um, the enemy can shoot bullets however we have, don't have any logic for updating the aiming goal so if we call shoot a bullet it will all always shoot at the angle zero so we will not cover how to actually um, update the aim of enemies. I will cover that in another video. So now that we have done it for the left click, we are going to do it for the right click. So right here, it's going to be really similar. So I will call that um, perform special attack. Special attack takes an actor and we copy paste that code. Actor player. There we go. And when the player actually left click, we perform attack for the player. Now, one little thing is that randomly generate bullet. It's probably not the best name now because we actually say where, like where to spawn it and in what direction. So we will rename that for um, generate bullet. So we'll replace all generate bullet. There we go. Now the next big thing we will change is the way um, we update the position. So as you can see, we have two function to update position. We got the update player position, which is this code, and then we have the update entity position. But in reality, an actor is an entity. So it's kind of weird to have two different function for the same thing. And it's going to be kind of, we want to, to combine those even though the logic is different. So there are many ways to do it. Um, the way I will do um, is right here, for every entity constructor, so the player, the bullets, the upgrade, and the enemies, we are going to add a new attribute, which will be the type. You will see why I'm doing this uh, later on. So the player will now have the type player, the enemy will have the type enemy, then the upgrade will have the type upgrade. And finally, the bullet will have the type bullet. There we go. So now that we have those um, in the something, we can do something like this. If something type equal, let's say player, we do a certain logic. And if 
the something type equal, let's say, enemy, we can do another logic and so on. So we can have the same function and just divide the function in different parts. Um, and this is what we are going to do. Um, so for the player, oops, we are going to copy paste this logic right here. So how to update the player and we are going to place it there. So right now, if we call this update entity position for something um, with the type not equal to player, then it's going to do the regular code. If the something is the type player, then it's going to do this logic right there. So this is very convenient because we can use the same function for to um, for both the player and other entities. So if we go back here in the update, right there we update player position. Now we can simply call update position player and then we draw entity player. But as you can see, those two um, update the entity position and then drawing it is exactly the same than just update entity. If we go back here, if you remember correctly, update entity is update the position and then draw the entity. So I guess that right now some of the changes seem a bit weird, but don't worry when I will introduce object oriented programming, it will make a lot of sense. Um, one little thing I will do right there is to rename all this something for entity. Um, so it's a bit better. And one last thing I want to do in this video is normally when you create a new object, for example, a enemy, we have a function that does that. So in that function, we create the model. So this is like a template. And then we use that to create an enemy. And we have a template for enemy bullet upgrade, but we don't have one for player, which is use the template directly. Um, normally you don't want to do this. Um, in our case right now, it does not really matter, but when we will do object oriented um, programming, it will be a big deal. What I'm going to do is just create a function that will do exactly that. So it, it kind of seems redundant, pretty much the same thing, but don't worry, it's, it's a big deal in the long run. And if you put um, var player with no values, um, it does kind of nothing. But it's a good habit because it's um, easier for Potter to know what are the variables that exist in your project. So I know that there is score and I know that there is player. So now one last thing we need to do is to actually call that function. Otherwise, player will stay undefined. So right at the beginning, um, at the end, right before starting the new game, I'm going to call create player. So let's see how our game goes. So we can still move around, we can still shoot bullets, we can still left click for one bullet. So as you can see, the functionalities are the same, but the code is different and a lot better than what it was at the beginning. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode where I will cover object oriented programming.